In spring training, Kurt Gibson preached it was time to create a new culture, a new identity for the Diamondbacks. That evolution has been on display as of late. A team becoming a reflection of their manager. This team is determined, passionate, and most importantly, a winner. It feels a bit like the D-backs of 07, and it might even feel more like that tonight. As the Diamondbacks face a hero from that season, the Nationals, Levon Hernandez. So stick with us if you can. The Nationals and Diamondbacks are coming up right now. Oh, time to close the roof. We have officially reached triple digits here in the great city of Phoenix, Arizona. Downtown Phoenix Chase Field, where tonight the Arizona Diamondbacks look to continue their 21-game roll. And they do so against the visiting Washington Nationals straight out of the nation's capital. A real build team doing better each and every year, no doubt. Now, what does it mean tonight? Let's take a look at the standings. Already Colorado has defeated San Francisco, so Arizona has moved back into a first place tie with the San Francisco Giants. It's June. They have a chance to be in first place all alone with the win tonight over the Washington Nationals. Hi there, folks, and welcome back to the ballpark. Alongside Hall of Fame broadcaster Joe Gargiola, my name is Darren Sutton. And, Joe, I have to ask you right away, a 21-game run in which this team has only lost four times. You watch on television. You watch here a lot in person. What sticks out to you? The unpredictability of this team. That's the one word that says it, and I think we said it about three weeks ago when Ryan Roberts got in there. He's the one that did it, and I would love to have a tape of the meeting when the season just started and won now because they're taking this club pretty seriously. They're not they're, they're afraid to play him a little bit. I'll tell you that a respect factor certainly. So let's talk about respect as Joe Saunders is on the mound but he faces a guy who you've got to respect in Levon Hernandez even though you know he can be 83 84 65 67 but Levon Hernandez in the big leagues is about as dependable as there has been since the new millennium. He's fun to watch pitch. Well, he is because he is a pitcher. He's not going to dazzle you with his fastball, his curveball, or whatever. When he changes speeds, he throws like a 40 mile an hour curveball, like it's on a string, and yanks it back when it gets near the plate. He's a good pitcher. He says he wants to pitch five more years. His birth records, anyway, say he's 36. I'm not sure if I buy that. But five more seasons, I guess, doing it the way he does it, he could pitch five more years. He could pitch another 105 years the way he does it because he doesn't. He really doesn't strain his arm. He lets the, the feelers behind him make the play. All right. Certainly glad to have you with us, Joe and I, and you. Thanks for inviting us into your home tonight. We're going to talk about another Joe when we come back. We're speaking, of course, of Joe Patterson. He's kind of that third musketeer. There's J.J. Putz. There's David Hernandez. But you better include that man because he one of the most important pieces out of the bullpen.
Nationals. Now, we know last year just how bad this bullpen was, but this year it's a much different story. Kevin Towers made sure of that, and he obviously started at the back, and that's J.J. Putz, the closer. He's been everything the D-backs could hope for, and then some. I think that was a Baxter sighting behind me. But he's had some help. The three Musketeers, if you will. David Hernandez, the former starter for the Orioles, has been phenomenal. But look at Joe Paul, the young man they by the name of Joe Patterson, an ERA of 0.71. He came in last night, pitched the ninth inning. One, two, three, he's been fantastic. It's our Geico quote of the game. Kirk Gibson talking about how much of a factor and a mentor J.J. has been to Joe Pa. J.J. started the whole thing with Joe Pa, for sure. Made him feel comfortable. Because when Joe Pa came here, you could see it in his eyes. He was obviously, uh, he was a Rule 5 guy, and he knows the deal and trying to impress people. and trying to understand what his role might be, how he can best help the team, how he can stay on the team. Yet he had no big league experience. So J.J. was right there for him, and he's walked him through it. Well, J.J. has been so good this year for this team. Coming up, D-backs with a chance to jump back into first place. Stephen Drew has been as solid as ever. A bases clearing triple last night. Coming up next, it's the Nationals. It's the D-backs. Joe and Darren. River Casinos. Play slots with your Players Club card at any Gila River Casino and you could win up to $20,000 instantly. Jack in the box. Right now, get the new Bourbon Barbecue Steak Grilled Sandwich at participating restaurants and by Southwest Airlines. New Rapid Rewards. Unlimited Rewards. Seats. No blackout dates. Joe and I ready to bring you Diamondbacks baseball. Certainly glad to have you with us tonight as Jerry Hairston, the third generation major leaguer, digs in. And we are underway at Chase Field. Joe Saunders fires right down the middle. That is strike one. 29 year old left hander Joseph Francis Saunders. And though Levon Hernandez got the top billing discussion in the open, it has been Joe over the last month or so that has really pieced things back together nicely. Here you go. This time, though, base hit into right field. Harrison with a fine piece of hitting. So Jerry is on. Let's take a look at the rest of Jim Riggleman's starting lineup. Brought to you by Pepsi Max. Ian Desmond has had a nice series. Jason Worth back after off yesterday. Hard to explain the size and the slugging ability of Michael Morse, but we'll show you. Danny Espinosa, Wilson Ramos, not punched tonight. Rick Ankiel is in center. Brian Bixler is a left and Levon Hernandez, who can hit. He can really hit. And Jim Riggleman, one-time Padres, one-time Cubs skipper, an interim manager, and he's battling some 
evening sunlight coming that way. Pass third. Do they get one? Do they get two? They do get one. With Stephen Drew behind Ryan Roberts. Erases Harrison, so Desmond is on. Well, you like so far, Joe, Saunders being on the attack. Early on this season, there were slow strides in the games. Last five or so starts, he's been much more aggressive early in the game. I like that he's throwing strikes because he's given his fielders a chance to make the play. A nibbler is going to get himself in trouble. The guy that throws strikes is going to get help. He's really changed his approach in the pen, and it's something that you would think maybe he would have tried earlier in his career as Jason Worth is back in there, and it misses away. He just felt like, as you see the numbers for Joe Saunders this year, 477, but a an ERA below four in the last month. Charles Nagy said, I'm just not seeing 100% at the end of your warm up time. I need to see you charging like a bull out of that gate, and I'm not quite seeing that. So they're much more aggressive, and he's got a great pickoff move. Can they convert? Nope, it's dropped by Stephen Drew. Is there a play with that great arm of Cora? There is not. And right away, Stephen Drew, he turns and tells Xavier Nady, that was my fault. Desmond was picked off. Saunders, by the way, has two pickoff caught stealings and two pickoffs this year. He's got a great move. It's amazing when you see the guys on the first move by the pitcher, they go. Now, look, he's got a good look at him as a left-hander, and that ball was well thrown. It's just he didn't catch it. Hit, Odd hit, hit Desmond. Hit, hit Desmond, that's right. It hit Desmond. He had no chance. So, unfortunately, then, you change the error on that one, and you have to give an error to Xavier Nady. Which is really unfortunate. Desmond got hit twice, they tell me. <laughs> he was getting beat up running around the bases. Playing dodgeball. So it is a stolen base and then an error. Worth takes outside. Jason Worth, eight home runs, 22 batted in, and a guy who was brought in to be the centerpiece. Of the likes of Steven Strasburg going forward and Bryce Harper going forward. Top picks the last few years. Worth his air long term. Up and in. And he is on. Let's take a look defensively at the Arizona Diamondbacks. Gerardo Parra, Chris Young, Justin Upton. Ryan Roberts, Stephen Drew, Kelly Johnson. We've seen Nadie and Drew involved in a key play already with the veteran Henry Blanco catching Joe Saunders. And this is a big fella. By the way, Worth was hit by a pitch. That was not ball four. That was up and in, and it hit him. I don't think he's seven feet five, though, Darren. Well, my goodness, Joe. I understand what you're saying, but I, I also don't think he's 6'5, 220. <laughs> In. So you were listening the other night. We did mention that. Joe keeps us honest there. We did kiddingly say that, uh, I mean, 6'5, 220, and I've stood up next to him the last couple of days, nowhere close to 220. And I still have him listed at about 6'8. I tell you, if he said to me, I'm seven feet tall and weigh 250, I'd hug him. <laughs> Look at his size of him. And when he was signed, by the White Sox several years back he was a shortstop that one is inside it's the only time the word short was used talking about this guy oh well, they've added 10 pounds to his listing so he must have had some good food here in Arizona because he's put on 10 pounds since game one there you go love the way he stands in the batter's box doesn't wiggle the bat he looks like a statue belongs in the park look into the dirt it goes two and two the count two and one make it well those hands have to come back to the body at some point right right but as big as he is he can make a tele telephone post come back look at him that's uh, rosin or something on that bat I don't know pine tar red pine tar they got so many new things now two and one the count on Morse a high strike. Morse didn't like it. Big fella, you're really, really tall. Tell you, when you're that tall and you get a base on balls, they should release the pitcher. 
<laughs> two and two the count. Morse is hitting 11 of his last 12, hitting 417. Fastball blew him away. Set it up with the breaking ball, the pitch before. You want to talk about a huge out, two outs, that runner stays at third. He just challenged him, showing confidence in his ability to get him, and he just threw it right by him. Hitters in scouting meetings, when they hear about Saunders, they hear about the sinking, sinking fastball and the changeup that does the same thing. So he benefited that time. They were thinking down, and he went up. Ball was moving. Here's Danny Espinosa. Danny reaching double digits early in the season in home runs as he swings over the top of that off speed pitch. 0 1 the count. As a matter of fact, he's the first rookie second baseman in Major League history to hit 10 homers before the end of May. Hmm. Same place to produce Troy Tulowitzki, Long Beach State. Big swing up toward that closed roof. Roberts watches it sail away. But Blanca will let you know where he wants that pitch. You can see him shift really close to Espinosa there. We also got a tip off on Roberts. He hasn't batted yet, and his suit's already dirty. <laughs> the right leg is already brown. Look. Does that surprise you? No. I like to know how he got it. Oh, and two the count. I think he just keeps a bucket of dirt by his locker. <laughs> That's right. Uh oh, he went up again, and that one was crushed into the upper deck, but it's foul. Bouncing all the way back down to the lower part of the ballpark. He tried to do the same thing he did to Morse there to Espinosa. Yes, he did. Picked the spot, but Espinosa jammed it. He started, he triggered it early. They play him to pull in the infield. Johnson close to the second base bag. Big hole on the right side. Runner takes off and moves up. So a change up into the dirt. Stolen base there for Jason Worth. That is seven on the year. He stole that one on Saunders. Why isn't that the famous defensive indifference? Now, I understand why you say that, but I guess it's because it's the first inning. Game still hanging in the balance. Oh, I see. You made that up. The defensive indifference stat, or this, or this part of the ball game. Both of them. Yeah, you're right. One and two, the count. Danny Espinosa. In this series, Danny hasn't been able to do a lot of what he had done coming in. Two of seven, with a walk. Look at the homers though, with runners in scoring position. Into the dirt with a changeup. Two and two, the count. Saunders last time out one because he got a ton of support. He pitched just okay, he will tell you. Six innings, four runs allowed. But when you get 15 runs, you're just fine giving up four. You're going to win. You had better win. <laughs> Outside, three and two, the count. That explains the Brooks Lawrence theory. See, when they asked Brooksy, they said, uh, What makes a good pitcher? He said, A lot of runs. Simple enough. Ready to roll on deck is Wilson Ramos. Good looking catcher, by the way. He's got Pudge Rodriguez to teach him. He lost him. So that good looking catcher Joe was talking about will be able to hit before he has a chance to catch. I think he halfway pitched around him. And yeah, Worth took second base and made first base open. They just pitched around him. His 20th pitch is about to come home. But for Joe, at times, this is what gets him in trouble. Kind of the tentative nature in which he attacks and then all of a sudden tries to turn it back on. Nibble. Inside. He just wants to make sure because that was a quick call. 
call it a strike. I guess he called the corner, but it's just a quick punch there. Carapaza behind the plate. Never really saw anything truly indicating strike. No. We'll go with 0 and 1 at this point. That one is inside, so the count is evened up at 1 and 1. One ball, one strike to Rama. He's one of six in this series with a double. He's driven in three already in hot water as Saunders. Pitcher has the choice to work from the windup of the stretch in this situation. Saunders opts to be more comfortable in the windup. I can't ever figure that out with nobody on base to pitch off the stretch with what they imagine there's base runners out there and now he's pitching off the full windup. He he's not sure of the count. He's asking everybody looking for the second base umpire to give him a count. Jason Worth said nope one ball two strikes. So OK one so ball. we're all confused. I'm glad that we weren't the only ones just to make sure everyone on the diamond wanted to know what the count was two balls and one strike. And, and with a name like Carapaza, you think you can see his hands all day long. They've been moving around. <laughs> the 2 1. Beat him with a fastball in. So now, as long as it's caught, it doesn't matter. Chris Young puts it away. A lot going on in that inning to put a zero up there, <laughs> including 22 pitches. Glad to have you back at the ballpark Saturday night blacks these Diamondbacks are ready to go to work. Kurt Gibson trying to edge that record back to 500 career record as a manager. His team's over 500 this year Southwest Airlines brings you Ryan Roberts Kelly Johnson Justin Upton. They also zoom in Stephen Drew Chris Young Xavier Nady with Parra Blanco and Saunders in the back of the plane Southwest Airlines brings you. The Diamondbacks starting lineup tonight and they all go to work against a man who I'm told is 36 years old. Eisler Levon Hernandez is his God given and family given name. The veteran right hander goes to work and he does so for the 458th start of his major league career. I think his birth certificate is like what happened to Satchel Pages the goat ate it. <laughs> That's what Satchel always said. He said, put it on the table and the goat ate it. <laughs> and I think that's about right. And he'd like to pitch about like Satch into his 50s. Oh, that wouldn't be too bad. He goes to work. Oh, by the way, strike one, 80 miles an hour. Did you see how the umpire called that one? Huh? Clear and definitive, wasn't that's it? That's right. Like he got his papers in order. And we had a lot of questions about that last batter or so, as that one is outside. Not about the zone, but about. When you get four or five people confused about the count on the field of play, the umpire's not letting them know. No. Pitches outside to Ryan Roberts. Levo will get behind hitters. He'll three and two, three and one, yeah, but he'll be around that plate. 36 year old, born in Villa Clara in Cuba, off the end of the bat, picks it up. Makes the play one out. 
I bet you if you put the radar gun on that throw to first base, it'd be the hardest ball he threw all night. I think you're right. Yeah. He had to, he needed an out there. That's right. He has something going. Takes him a while to get there, but he picks it up and fastball. He now faces Kelly Johnson. Lebo too reminds us, and most fans know this about if you follow baseball. He's a big guy, big drink of water out there, but he's a good athlete. Oh yeah. A little bit low, one and zero the count. He's a great golfer as well. Really? Went out and played first couple of days here in the town. That pitch is low and. The one thing I must admit that I am missing out on is the man that has caught him third most in his career is Miguel Montero. And Miguel Montero said he learned a lot catching LeVon Hernandez. And I always love when they duel one another. But it's Blanco in there tonight. That one is outside. Lebo's hero, the guy he imitated, was Connie Marrero. Does that name ring with you? It does. Yeah. He said. That's how he learned how to pitch. Three and one the count. Tell you nothing scares this guy. He came to pitch. On three one a breaking ball inside. Let's take a look at the Nationals defensively. Johnson draws the walk. Continuing to heat up Brian Bixler Rick Ankiel Jason Worth defensively Harrison Jr. Desmond Espinosa Mike Morris is at first Wilson Ramos catches Levon Hernandez. He has pitched six times to Ramos this year six times to Pudge Rodriguez. So as far as Levo is concerned he'll take care of his own business. And that was the one thing he used to tell Miguel Montero. He'd say fastball away and Miguel would set up kind of on the other side of the plate say I mean away. Get over there. Get off the plate. Is that one is outside. Well, the good pitcher really, he'll be around that plate, but he gets you out on pitches that are really not strikes. They look like strikes, but you have to be a crafty, gutsy pitcher to be able to throw the ball like that. Justin Upton goes after a pitch just off the plate. Last couple of days as Upton is retired he has. Been a bit of a baseball crash test dummy if you will as he has worn it a couple of times I know you spoke to them before the game about it. That's the one that hurt right there. That just nicked his shirt. Three times he got hit. Twice on the shirt, but that first one took care of all three of them. He had a bruise. He's had a nice home stand. I know we sat and talked to him for a while today about a lot of different things, and at some point we'll we'll delve into it because I love your take as well on what this man hitting did last night, hitting three and zero, Stephen Drew. As he takes. I tell you, people just don't realize how difficult that is to hit three and zero because you you know you're going to get a fastball nine and a half times out of ten, but you got to get it in a certain spot and guys just get too anxious. I've seen some real good hitters who could not hit three and zero. You mentioned one name to me that was stunning. Monty Irvin. Monty finally said, "Don't give it to me. I, I get too anxious. Because you don't. You, you say fastball. I want a belt high. I want it inside. And you're going to look at like a little square. Not a lot of room. But if it gets in there, and that's what uh, Stephen did last night. I mean, it, it's like hitting the jackpot. Two and oh, the count on Drew. Drew gives it a ride into right center field. Toward that wall it goes. Over and up." Against the wall, racing on around is Kelly Johnson. Steven heading to third with the slide and a triple for Drew. Love to watch him run the bases. He just torched his old teammate that time. It's his favorite base hit, the triple. Right down the middle, and he knows that he clocked it, and so does Levo. 
And Keel just couldn't get to it. It's a long way. This rolls to the third baseman. He got the outside corner. 0 and 1 the count to Chris Young. Arizona leads it 1 to nothing. For Stephen Drew, that is 33 RBIs this season. And career triple number 50. Over the last three seasons, Stevens right at the top of the list and most triples in the game. Swing and a miss. There it is. There's that pitch. We're talking about it on the bench before the game. He gets so worked up, amped up is the expression he uses. He said, I was so amped up that when he released that ball, I was going to swing. And I said, man, you couldn't hit that ball with a four by eight. And he said, no, but I was amped up. Well, amped down. Especially against Levon. He runs that in, a slider that he turned over a little bit. He's never liked him. And again, he liked him in 2007 when they dumped champagne on one another's heads. <laughs> Twice. They did it in Colorado on a clinch. They also did it in Chicago at Wrigley when they advanced to the championship series. He's doing everything he can to stay back on that pitch. Did you see that curveball? It looked like it got the home plate and just stopped and said hello and then let him swing. I'm telling you, sometimes when you face a pitcher like him, Stu Miller was like that. Look, he waited on that pitch. It's almost like Levon has got a string there, and when it gets there, he yanks it. You really have to wait. Sheets lifts it to left. And way out front. Levon Hernandez does give up a run, though. His old shortstop, Stephen Drew. I played behind that before. I'll be looking for this, and if I get it, I'm going to make it count. Talking about facing this man out of Homer, Michigan, Josh Colmenter, seven shutout innings, five strikeouts. And this year he's got a 1.25 ERA. I'd be very intrigued, your perspective on Josh. Well, the thing you have to figure out is his release point, which is one of the better hidden relief points in baseball. And, and, and Ankeel just kind of talked himself out of it last night. Ankeel, speaking of, puts it on the ground. His head was. Scrambled eggs before he even got into the box and a lot of hitters. That's what he has done in his five starts He's got an ERA of a buck and a quarter I know you spoke with him uh, for quite some time down there on the bench and he's uh, he's a pretty cool customer isn't he, he really is and asked about that delivery I said are you tired of people asking you about the delivery he said yeah 
I says, like me with being bald. Everybody says, you're, you know, you're really bald. No I'm kidding. I went to bed last night. I had hair. You hear it so much. I said, you got to come up with something new. He said, like what? I said, you know, tell him that you wash windows or something and get your arm back there. He's quite a kid. Breaking ball hammered but foul. Comes from a solid Midwest family. Said dad was the one who made sure that everyone stayed on track. But everyone, according to him in the conversation that Joe and I had with him, everyone in his home was pretty even tempered. And he's very even tempered. I thought his father might be the big boss. He said, well, his mom. I said, Mama used to always tell you, wait till your father gets home. I said, no, I wasn't that bad. Good kid. Stay that way. Good Midwestern roots, I would think so. As that one is rolled out to Roberts. Bixler is on the move. Roberts, boy, he barely got it. And I mean barely got it. A little change up over there, maybe with an extra step as well. And Bixler, you love that hustle, yeah, nearly beat it out. Well, most infielders got that habit of getting the ball and tapping the glove. Watch him. Yeah. Oh, that was close. You're right. I would imagine mental note made right there by Ryan Roberts. Levon Hernandez can hit. That time he broke his bat. He's none too pleased with that bat. Just threw it away. Darn that bat. I'm better than that. every year for the last decade and uh, you know it's just uh it's like I say you know he's just he's just really calm on the mound relaxed it's like nothing bother him two runners on no outs and he's still calm you know he's he doesn't change his game plan talking about Levon Hernandez Miguel Montero sounded like he had an awful lot of respect for him didn't he <laughs> and rightly so He's top step in this ball game. Trying to pull it is Xavier Nady. Hey, and no. on across the veteran is erased on a 6 3 ground out. Well, and that's an appropriate guy to talk to. Brian Schneider has caught Levon Hernandez the most, the majority of that time in Montreal and Washington. Benito Santiago is second on that list with San Francisco. Bobby Estalea is on that list. And then fourth is Miguel Montero. Miguel Montero is. Fourth on that list of those 457 career starts. He kind of took him by the ear on occasion, Levon did. I bet he did. Eroto Parra hitting in that eight slot, which many hitters will tell you is the toughest spot to be in in the National League. You got nobody protecting you behind you. 
I'm always curious how you make the decision that well now I need to expand my zone now I don't. Oh he's in, he, I, my apologies I have him one spot ahead there's your eight hole hitter. I'm used to par hitting eight. Still a tough spot to hit as para patiently looks at three out of the zone. And not that far out he's around the plate but they are not strikes and you have to have a pretty good eye and pretty good discipline to take them. He takes a strike from Hernandez. An average fastball about 82 miles an hour. Change up, hold it. And he's angry with himself for the second out of the inning. Anytime the Diamondbacks score six runs or more, Taco Bell gives away three free tacos with a large drink purchase, four to six the following day. So instead of facing his old catcher, now here is that eight slot I spoke of. He faces Henry Blanco. Blanco's been an interesting study. As he takes strike one because when he plays, he homers. He's been hitting the fastball a mile. He's been hammering it to use the expression you hear most around the clubhouse. Off the end of the bat, what do you think about that Don Baylor conversation? Folks, we had a conversation with Don Baylor during the game last night in which Baylor had his guys ready, said, We know he throws a curveball and we're going to hammer it. He's just a good coach, made a good manager, big asset on the team. I thought that was very interesting. The 0 2. Off the plate, that's strike three. He just made that look easy. One, two, three. Home game is June 18th, and the Diamondbacks host the Chicago White Sox at Chase Field. I'm told the first 15,000 fans to the game take home the D-backs trucker cap. It's courtesy. Ah, there it is. Courtesy of Sports 620 KTAR. Good-looking trucker cap there. Call 602-462-4790. Nice D-backs trucker cap. Nice-looking child too. Yeah, she is, isn't she? That's my nine-year-old daughter, Lily, who. Drove you and I to, to work today. That's right. She got us down here safe and sound, and now I think she's got herself a cap. Jerry Harrison to lead it off. Boy, LeVon Hernandez got things comfortable real quick. As that one is up and away. Jerry Harrison senior a longtime utility player and a pinch hitter a very solid pitch hitter in the 80s. 
Sam Harrison playing in the Negro Leagues in the 40s and in 1950 became the first African American to play for the White Sox. Quite a baseball family. Yes, sir. Broke his bat and it's a fair ball and Jerry's on the move. Over to get it is Para. He's got that big arm but Harrison hustling on around races in there. And Jerry Harrison with a double and that bat just snapped. I mean it went off in chunks. Not like it's cracked. Watch this thing fly off the home plate. Look at that. He's got a handful of toothpicks. Hit it right off the end. Look at that. You know, Louisville Slug used to make all the bats, but Upton's got a bat made by Sam somebody. It's Sam in, bat? Yeah, it's made in Canada. Yeah, there is, uh, obviously, they have to be Major League Baseball approved, but there's a couple of dozen bat companies that are approved. Used to be just one, huh? Well, Louisville, then Ed Rondack came in. Mm -hmm. But now they got them all over the place. Everybody but Walmart's got him. One and oh, the count. Ian Desmond pushes that punt to the right Come side. On. Saunders falling off. Backhanded flip. He got him. What a play. He moved the runner up, but there's no doubt Desmond was bunting for a base hit. And here's the play. He got rid of that ball while he was falling and was accurate. We always say it because when you watch sports, you get used to it, but go try something like that out in your backyard and see if you can go ahead and flip the ball accurately about 25 feet. <laughs> it's just, I think I know I do. And I'm sure fans do take for granted. You don't because you had to do it. You had to play it every day in the big leagues. How fast this game can be. Yeah, but I can never do that. I mean, that was a great play. Here is Jason Worth. Fastball is up and in to the veteran Worth. I see plays like that, and they ought to say after that, "Don't try this at home," like they do on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One and zero, the count. Pitches high to Jason Worth. That's some beer that Jason Worth has got. He must filter his breathing or something with that, huh? It is uh, maintained, not like that oh, one. Oh, wait a minute. There it is. I mean, Jason Worth is like beard after taxes. <laughs> the 2 0. Oh. 2 and 1 the count. Baseball family Jason Worth like we were talking about the baseball family with the Harrisons but Jason's grandfather Dick Schofield Ducky Schofield and his uncle is Dick Schofield the infielder for the Angels. So certainly a baseball family. From Jason Worth's background. I think his grandfather Ducky. But the Cardinals got kicked out the first game in the big leagues. Really? Yeah. Stanky was the manager and they were jockeying the umpire. Change up, he lost him. And the uh, umpire came over there and he's going to throw somebody out, and Stanky pointed to Schofield. And he launched him. And he made him, <laughs> the, he made him take the bullet, the rookie. <laughs> yeah. So Worth is on, drawing a walk. It's a comeback for Worth. He had a serious injury. And you were describing. You and I were both talking about it on the drive in a unique injury that uh, I, I know I'm intimidated to pronounce oh. but an injury in that wrist that you had to be specifically looking for it, it was a, a hidden injury so to speak and he went home and a doctor who formerly worked at the Mayo Clinic told me she'd go to Rochester and have somebody look at it which they did and they sewed it together and he wears a little protective uh, I guess risk to uh, it's not taped or anything but uh, for a while there he was having all kinds of problems 
Yeah, you can see with him standing out at first, still has that protective sleeve on. Jason Worth, who has, by the way, been good for this man. Wisely, Jim Riggleman. And you see Worth protected that wrist right there. Wisely, Jim Riggleman said, Mike Morris, go stand by Jason Worth. First of all, they're both huge guys. But Worth was a late bloomer. It took him a while to become who he is. He bounced around trying to find full time work with the Blue Jays and the Dodgers as Morse fights that one off and it's a foul ball. And Morse has gone down the same career path. He's not a rookie. He's not first time through Mike Morse. As a matter of fact, he's been around for a while and he has had time with the Mariners. He has had time with the organization where he started with the White Sox. There's that protective uh, wrist. I don't know what you'd call it that, that he wears. Fires that one over. He said, he looked at the bubblegum card and, and he's swinging, and you can see he couldn't turn his hand over. Got a nice contract going to the Washington Club, though, I'll say that. He did. He got a very nice contract. That pitch bounces, and it is away. A little bit more on the big fellow in the batter's box. We bring in Brad. Brad, what do you have for us? Well, you know, Thursday night, uh, Morse had such a great game, four for five, and I grabbed him for our postgame show for an interview, and he said, yeah, sure, but I don't want to talk about my numbers. He came into that game hitting over 300, and again, those four hits, but, you know, he's a young kid, but he knows a veteran movie. He doesn't want to talk about the personal stats because this team has been struggling, and so I said, hey, you got it, and we, we wanted to talk about uh, their win that night. So a pretty, pretty uh, mature young man and a big young man as well. That he is. And I wanted to talk about his numbers. Thank you, Brad. The good ones always are working with someone. And that's nice to have a manager you can go stand by if there's any questions. Sometimes the managers find you and hope you ask the right questions. And if you don't, they'll make sure you ask the right question. Swing and a miss. A changeup. Well, he got him to chase a high fastball the first time with the runner on third. This time he gets him to chase a changeup. Ball had some movement. You could really see it with that shot. And you talk about frustrations. That's twice he has struck out with a runner on third. That'll have your bang in your head against that dugout wall. Mm. With less than two outs. You're talking about that worth injury. He, he, as you mentioned, hit by A.J. Burnett, who was with the Marlins at the time, and just couldn't find the right thing, that exploratory surgery. Olno Triquetro. I don't know what. I... <laughs> A little number back to the mound. I can't say whatever Worth had done. But what I can say is that Houdini is alive and well. And he's wearing Joe Saunders jersey.
like every inning, the Cubs rolled into a double play. Levon Hernandez, we just called Joe Saunders Houdini. That man was Houdini that night. What a celebration it was to behold in a locker room that's about the size of a powder room in most of your homes. They didn't care. They had a fabulous time. <laughs> Wrigley Field, obviously. Joe Saunders leads it off. I remember being in that locker room and Levon, you know, he's got a pretty big jersey, as you can tell. Pretty big guy. He had that jacket on when you saw him came into that shot. Look, you know, you wear a T-shirt and sleeves, and you have your jersey. He had untucked his jersey and had filled it with all sorts of beverages. He had beverages in that jersey. He was just walking around serving guys. With that big jersey, I think he put different varieties and brands, just filled that jersey up. Walking bar. That's exactly what he was. Two and one, the count to Joe Saunders. Four hits this year. The pitch dives low. That's a fastball, by the way. How can you tell? Because you, it was 82. That's the only reason I could tell. You don't hear it hit the mid. No. Joe Saunders, fly ball left field. Bixler puts it away. Beautiful night for a ball game as we welcome you back. Temperatures into the triple digits, so we play with the roof closed. Beautiful pictures from up above. Helicopter pilot Scott Geyer brings us those photos, those shots, I should say. Here's Ryan Roberts. Paints the outside corner to Roberts. He's amazing to watch pitch. He really is. Roberts puts that one on the ground. Ranging to his left with a couple of pumps. Into that glove is Ian Desmond and he shoots it on across. So high end velocity wise for Levon Hernandez 83 low end 61. Just think if the wind was blowing against him. <laughs> Something tells me he wouldn't care. No, he wouldn't care. He'd pitch the same in a hurricane. He really would. Kelly on the ground. My goodness. <laughs> Levo. Making it look easy, isn't he, folks? One to nothing. is a play on May the 24th on a wild pitch. Fearless play, certainly our Chaz Roberts air conditioning. Cool play. One with the earth, Joe Saunders.
I like to see Joe like that. A little, little bit of an edge to him. He didn't always let that edge out. I'll just put it that way in parts of spring training and early in the season. There's a little bit more firm step that he goes about now. You got to give the pitching coach a lot of credit. Kind of rode him a little bit and kind of snapped him out of it. And Joe in this one, there's Charles Nagy. Bouncing ball out to Roberts, played it back. But he stuck with it. Took a couple of shuffle steps backwards to play that one. And so Wilson Ramos is erased. And now Rick Ankiel. Ankiel at one time, one of the game's most promising young pitchers. And if you don't know the story, just lost the feel for throwing strikes. And despite his God gifted left arm, which he still uses in center field as an outfielder. He couldn't recover. To me it's an incredible journey to go all the way back down to the bus leagues and to make it back as he has. It is. It is. Once you get used to the big leagues and go back to the minor leagues. It's a tough ride. Speaks to your athleticism too. I mean. Most stereotypical pitchers. I'll put it that way. Most stereotypical pitchers. Couldn't do that. That's why he's such a special athlete. One and two the count. I thought they'd make a movie of his life because he had a tough time growing up. He really did with his father. Mm. Breaking ball that strike three over the outside corner a big sweeping curveball. That's the best curveball he's thrown. Just frozen. Nothing you can do. You know, a lot of people say, well, at least swing at it if you're going to strike out. But sometimes you see the ball and you want to swing, you just can't pull that trigger. Micah Owings was asked this winter by several teams Would you like to put that right arm away as a pitcher and come join us in the minor leagues and be a position player? He was asked by several teams when he was a free agent, and he told us in Denver, Colorado, I don't know why, but I. I wasn't ready to stop pitching. I almost took a little offense to it. It might have awakened me a little bit. I'm not ready to stop being a pitcher. Hmm. And there were several teams that extended that invitation and said, hey, come play for us. You'll start in the minor leagues, but you'll play first or right field. You'll play every day. Hmm. Because we know he can hit. Wonder what it is about pitching that's got him by the throat. That one is. Into the dirt. I I still think, and Mike has said this not during the interview. He said, and he's pitched very well for the Diamondbacks in short stints out of the pen in his two starts this year. He just feels like it's unfinished business. He still thinks he can be a good major league pitcher. Well, he's got the chance. Bunts that one. This is a tough play for Saunders, and he makes it. Well, that's a couple of great plays by Joe Saunders in this ball game. A little pep in his step the last month or so. Hopping off the mound and making plays like this.
of Washington. Glad to have you with us on this Saturday night. Find out how you can play Kachinko, brought to you by Gila River Casinos. We play it right here at the ballpark. Go to the interactive kiosk, get all your answers at section 111. Everyone is a winner, as you can see, during regular season home games. Gila River Casinos, our good friends and partners with the Diamondbacks. Justin picks on a pitch just off the plate again. He's around that plate constantly, and, and it's a, it's almost amazing to stop to think it's a one nothing ball game. The Diamondbacks scored on a base on balls. The Kelly Johnson and triple by Drew. So the base on balls that gift certificate came back to haunt him. That pitch is wide, dives down and away. Levon walks about three per nine innings of work in his major league career. Sometimes he will just walk you because he stays stubborn. His walks aren't because he loses command. Oh my goodness. How about that curveball? I mean, this is a Lollapalooza, this one. Even Justin doesn't believe that one, and I don't believe it. Big old looping curveball, the big bad bender. Upton base hit in the left field. Looked like he picked on a changeup down and in. Patient enough to earn his way on. So Upton with the base hit, Justin having a huge home stamp. He's got 12 hits and 21 at bats. He likes that ball down, no question about it. We've seen quite a maturation in this young man, which is understandable when you're only 23. He sat and talked baseball with you for a good 20, 25 yes, minutes. He did, and made a lot of sense. You got to like this kid. Here's Stephen Drew. By the way, that's his first ever hit against Levon Hernandez. He's now one for ten against him. Like going to school. Levon threw 19 pitches in the first inning and then nothing. I mean, 10 in the second and eight in the third. Steven was pretty laid back about hitting 3 0. This is what happened a 3 0 count. This is what he did with the bases loaded. That was tonight. He tripled with the bases loaded last night on a 3 0 count. Get all these triples confused. He hit so many. But he was pretty laid back about it and explaining it to you. Yes, he was. I mean, he didn't think it was that big a deal. And I tell you, I admire guys that can do that. The best 3 0 hitter I ever saw, and I'm going back a little bit, was Jeff Heath. I mean, when he got three balls and no strikes, you could hear his legs screw into the ground. He was set, and he'd give you a pretty good swing. Here we go, 3 0. Takes outside ball four. Let's listen to Kirk Gibson. Talking about that subject, hitting 3 0. We were swinging 3 0 quite a bit earlier in the season, and you started to see some 3 0 off speed pitches. Actually, we did a good job of laying off them. So um, you know, you're looking in a little box right there, 3 0. You're not looking to expand the zone at all. You're looking right where, like if you were to set up a batting tee and say, this is where I want the ball, that's where you're looking for it. So. Um, Steven did a great job. It was, it was very, very um, kind of not that easy to execute, but did a great job. Of it. Good confidence in him. Pretty good description. A little box. That's about what it amounts to, and, and that's where the discipline comes in. However, the outside corner, even in Gibson's office last night, I spent a few minutes with him, and it's so funny you wouldn't think that that's the word. You think, all right, three and zero, free and easy, but. Discipline is the perfect word. He used the same word that you use. Well, if you've played this game, you know it's not that easy. And laying off that pitch for ball four was another one. That's what I was going to ask you. Just as successful as that triple last night. Absolutely. You know, it was funny to me talking to Justin Upton about it. 
<laughs> he looked at me and he said, did you ever get a 3-0 hit sign? <laughs> I said, Justin, I never got a steal sign. Never mind a 3-0. I was at the Cubs. They made me take three and two with Simmons pitching. <laughs> three balls and two strikes. You get a take sign. How do you explain that to your kids? And he definitely had a youthful look in his eyes when he asked you. <laughs> he really did. He really did. Those eyes wide open. He said, what, what do you mean? Didn't you ever get to hit three and oh? <laughs> the pitch is outside. One and two the count. It was refreshing. It really was. One and two the count. One to nothing Arizona leads it. Chris Young with nobody out. Just in case Upton scampers back to the bag. Now if you're going to fake a throw that's the way you should do it. He faked it so good that he had Upton sliding back to the bag. Looks like he landed funky on his wrist a little grimace. One and two the count. A lot of room on the right side of the infield. And that one is outside only because Danny Espinosa is trying to keep Justin close. Danny's just going to make sure Justin doesn't get a big secondary lead. There's a lot a lot of room there. I had the wrong television. We're like a, we're like a TV store up here. Yeah. The two two. Got him with a slow curveball. Tantalizing as it comes up there. I think the tantalizing is the correct word, but it's more like hypnotizing. Drew. <laughs> Look at that thing. That is pitching, people. Say what you want. That is pitching. He is 11 and 7 in his career against Arizona. 21 career starts. Of active pitchers, only Jake Peavy has more wins with 13. Another pickoff throw. We told you Espinosa was close. We also reminded you that Levon's a good athlete. He showed quick feet there. And I'll tell you, that's a good play when he comes from the pitcher because, yeah, you don't pick him off, but what you're doing is cutting down his lead, and maybe you'll have a play at the plate. He's got a smaller lead if you saw him before. There's a strike. Oh, and one the count. He's got a feel for that part of the plate now. Oh, yeah. Took him a couple of innings, but he's starting to grab that outside corner. He is very good, Levon, at letting umpires know, and he'll feel for that zone until he figures out how close he has to come. Outside. And Joe, what I mean by that is he may go an inning outside, outside, outside as the edge is closer, but if he if he'll get a call two inches off the plate, he'll never come over the white of the plate then. If umpires will give him two inches, he'll never come over the white. Well, he's asking for it by pitching like that. That's what, what he does best. And if you make him come over, this Vic Carapaza has made him at least come on the black part of the play. You'll get a feel for it. The curveball is away. Nady in his career coming in against Levon, 7 of 15. And he's homered against him as well. Number 61 trademark number that he has always worn. Nady high drive right field well struck. Worth going back to the track to the wall. He leaps and he got it. Worth with a fine play. Upton tags up. Jason Worth, though he didn't play last night, in game one and now tonight has played it like it's his home ballpark. Very comfortably. He went with the pitch, figuring that Levon would stay right there, and then he hits it well to right field and watch the catch. He finds the fence. 
and a good piece of base running by Justin Upton who you know he's going to score if it's well if it's a home run obviously but if it hits the fence and comes back he'll score so he was standing on the bag and when he caught it he took the extra base I'm telling you that's twice folks the triangle Bermuda Triangle area over there by the Washington bullpen he went into that corner and was unfazed in game one worth did we see a lot of outfielders get lost in that triangle area and that was in game one really broke a sweat did he <laughs> curveball one and oh the count there's an area out there you look by our camera down there that camera down there that little triangle outfielders don't like that area and he went right into the corner there. He finds that fence. Once he found that fence, he had more confidence. Roll to the right side because Worth made a fabulous play. Levon Hernandez throws another zero up on the scoreboard. Just one run in this game, and the Diamondbacks, they have it. This is the play that he made look so easy. Visiting player, that triangle. Worth doing a great job. Or AT&T trivia question: Name the only two active pitchers with at least 40 complete games. They are active, and they have thrown at least 40 complete games. I don't know. Is that a hint? The guy who's hitting. What do you folks think at home? Oh, he's way away from that play, didn't he? Can he reach the outside part of the play? That's a good point. Levo's taking a step back from the old days. He grounded out the second in the second. He's got 209 career hits. Two and one the count. <laughs> he's got 10 career home runs as well. Topper. He was beaten away. Levo busting it down the line. They just get him. Century Link high speed internet, high speed pitch. Levon Hernandez, 84 miles an hour. Joe Saunders, not much higher at 92 miles an hour. Joe he gets a little more in that left arm. I'll never forget Levon Hernandez. Leaning on some railing by the on deck circle in Cincinnati, just chatting with fans. 
I believe it was in St. Louis, chatting with fans, you know, just leaning and chatting and chatting and leaning, and they had some great seats. They were getting to know him. As Harrison swings and he misses. And whoa. Hobbles out of there. Well, finally, Levon looked up as if to say, oh, I have to go hit. You folks take care. Nice to talk with you. Walk to the batter's box and Homer. In St. Louis. Dropped the one flap down as well as he ran around the bases. <laughs> He's being Joe cool. He was very cool. That one bounces in there. One and one the count. Who started to flap down? Jeffrey Leonard, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Get your teammates a bruise if you do it too much. <laughs> Especially if you bat behind them. Yeah. Harrison took a shot at extra bases. I tell you, that's going to be the next coach. It's going to be the handshake coach. They're going to name a coach to proper handshake. Used to be you just shook hands. Now they got the low five, high five, middle five. Well, they have all kinds of all, all literally five. dances that go into them. Yeah, that's right. That one is into the dugout. I tell you, the celebrations after a walk off. That's dangerous. Like Justin Upton the like other night. The other night. I don't blame him for running away from those guys. You can get hurt in the middle of that. It has become interesting that you. You're the hero for your team and for being the hero you get beat up. That's right. This is not going to be an easy one. It's dying in center field but Young closes the gap. This comes on in. He can really play center field. Now. Yeah, he just unhooked and came in full bore. That's a great shot too. Like they were passing in the night drew going one way young going the other after young made the play. Those are two very talented middle of the field baseball players two cornerstones of this franchise and that one is a strike. I tell you it's good to see a nice crowd here tonight too because they're looking at a pretty good ball club at a pretty good ball game. Word starting to spread about this team. This team that is on 17 and four in their last 21. And as you said in our ride in together, you can talk about playing competitive, but then let me see, and you are seeing competitive play. Show me, show me, and they have. The unpredictability of this team is exciting. One and two, the count. In what way? Well, you don't know what they're going to do. Hitting three and zero, stealing five runs behind, two runs ahead. It doesn't make any difference. Six runs behind, they'll score seven sometimes. I mean, it's it's exciting to watch them. Almost like Willie Bloomquist going from first to third on a ground ball out. On a ground, exactly. I mean, you got to give Gibson a lot of credit. When he talked about hitting three and zero, I mean, he turns them loose. They're shining a little brighter right now, these Diamondbacks. Had him rolling over the top of that one. Fielding, firing, in time. Got him. One, two, three. Eight in a row. Sat down by Joe. A little insurance, please.
of the Washington Nationals, Joe Garagiola, Brad Steinke, and Darren Sutton. We thank you for inviting us into your home this evening. As Henry Blanco takes a little mini breaking ball over the outside, and Henry's got some history as well. He came in 11 of 27. That's a 407 average. Against Levon Hernandez. So he's seen him quite a bit. 27 at bats. Henry, high fly right field. There's that guy again, Worth. He tracks it easily and puts it away. AT&T trivia question. The only two active pitchers with at least 40 complete games. Roy Halliday, Levon Hernandez. The two active pitchers with at least 40. He's happy. He smiled. And why not? Pitching quite a ball game, losing by a run. Levon is a guy as he fires a strike over the outside corner that literally will elicit this response. Oh, that's right. He still pitches. And he pitches for Washington. I had forgotten he still pitches. Literally, and, it, and it's meant to be respectful. Look at him hurry off the mound and make that play. <laughs> he took a walk in the park. He didn't even run for it. <laughs> Watch Levon. Oh, I'll go get it. Don't worry about it. I'll pick it up. At <laughs> a point, Levon. Man, the pressure's getting to him. <laughs> I never saw that before. <laughs> oh, that's a blooper tape. <laughs> so he gets Ryan Roberts to dig in and take a breaking ball, that slow curve ball. But then you remind yourself that, oh, yes, he still pitches, and he's one of the busiest pitchers in the last decade. Yeah, he hasn't broken a sweat. That's why. Balls. I mean, look at that. More innings than anyone. Second in complete games. We were just talking about that. Yeah. 40,000 pitches he's thrown. <laughs> he's allowed more hits than anybody else. <laughs> but he takes the ball every five days, and we just saw why. They had him positioned perfectly. That's it. Levon Hernandez. Like a walk, literally, like a walk in the park. And, and I mean, literally. The Nationals race. The Roosevelt, Lincoln, all got knocked down. And Gracie, he's more about wrestling. Oh my goodness! And Matt Williams was the winner. And Joe and Lovely Lily. Yeah, he's much older than Mark Grace. 
White is always Gracie lose. Always, always loses. Never wins, folks. Teddy Roosevelt or Mark Grace have never won. Roosevelt has that big presidential race in Washington, D.C. We'll see that race in August when the Diamondbacks head to D.C. to see the Nationals. Ought to be fun to be running around in a big, thick suit in August in Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah. Jason Worth takes outside. Look at look at Matty just oh my goodness man he pushed that guy pretty good. That's the first time I saw a body take a bad bounce. Wow. I mean that's similar to what he'd do. The old Marine. Folks love him. They love them all except for, of course, the Mark Grace likeness. Kids run and cry. Hot shot, Steven. Leaves his feet. Pops back up. Wow, what a play. Worth deserves it for what he has done to these Diamondbacks. Ball was really smacked. Think about Drew when he makes a play like that he knows he doesn't have much time you don't see him pat the ball in the glove and he just gets it over to first base. Great play. As we were saying earlier up the middle at shortstop and center field the Diamondbacks are in very good hands. And there's no denying the improvements that Kelly Johnson has made the last three years as a second base. But Steven is officially reaching the getting taken for granted point. He makes those plays routine. You folks might remember Adam Everett who played shortstop and still continues to receive contracts because he's such a great glove man not much of a hitter. But Adam pulled me aside one time when I was covering a young shortstop by the name of J.J. Hardy. And he said, J.J.'s a great shortstop. Don't take him for granted. It's easy to take shortstops for granted. And that is, I think, where Drew is becoming. Roberts on a backhand. That's a nice play. You just said why when you make plays like that play that he made on Worth. Look a little bit easier than they should be. You start to take guys for granted like that. Well, you do, and you got to give Saunders some credit. He's not falling behind. He's not walking a barrel full of people, and the guys are ready to make the play. Throw strikes, work quickly, and you'll get good defense. And the defense, you're right, is ready. Joe has been fabulous. Shut out baseball here in the sixth inning. It's a funny ball game. He was in all kinds of trouble in the first. Didn't have the good pacing. He got out of it. Bases loaded jam. Hit runners on first and third with one out in the third. He got out of it. But then since then he's cruised. I mean truly. Nothing in the fourth. Nothing in the fifth. About to clean up here the sixth. He hopes. Called high. 3 0 the count. Pretty good looking pitch there. Oh, it's high. They got it right. Switch hitter batting right handed. Popped it up a mile high. Stephen Drew again puts that one away. Now that one was an easy one. Joe's making it look easy using his defenders, tossing a shutout at the Nationals.
just tantalizing hitters with soft stuff outside of the zone. And then, of course, Joe Saunders got Morris a couple of times with runners on third. That's the big key. And then he helped himself with a fine play on a sacrifice bunt. Stephen Drew against Levon Hernandez after a walk. Stephen had a triple. That's the only run in this ball game. That was in the first inning. That's where we stand. One to nothing is our score, as if you've just joined us. Joe Saunders has pitched a very solid baseball game tonight. This is, so far, the best that we have seen from Joe this season. As the curveball is up and away. You know, the irony of it all, Darren, is that when they show the blooper tape, guess who's going to be on it? It won't be Saunders for the two great plays. No, it'll be the man who took the walk. <laughs> That's right. You are exactly right. You are exactly right. By the way, Joe is at 80 pitches. Some of you might have been thinking about that, so he's fine to keep on going right. out there. 3 and 0 Kelly Johnson. Now, Levon Hernandez, you saw the lone run. That was in the first. He has been very good as well. He's had a couple of clean innings. He fires a strike. Don't forget every time a Diamondback player hits a home run this season Fulton Holmes will donate one hundred and fifty dollars to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. Partnership with Fulton Holmes. Cuban born right hander Levon Hernandez fires and didn't get the inside corner that is ball four. He wanted it too. A little bit more on the man who defected from Cuba years ago in Lebo. Let's bring Brad in. What do you have, Brad? Yeah, very courageous. Left Cuba at the age of 20 and obviously in 1997 led the Marlins to that World Series championship. I talked to Juan Miranda who also defected from Cuba just to get his take on Levon. He said he was truly an inspiration because he saw that a guy could leave the communist country of Cuba, go to America and be successful. And uh, that's the reason he decided to do the very same thing. So uh, lebo has been around a long time and Inspiration to a lot of guys just like Juan Miranda. Yeah, an inspiration to Uneski Maya, who is his teammate who did the same thing. And thank you, Brad, for that. There's strike one to Justin Upton. Pitch count, by the way, for Levon. Did you ever go to Cuba to see any baseball? I've never been to Cuba. Have you? Yeah, we spring trained there in 52. Pretty good ball players. Used to be, it was like a shuttle between Cuba and Washington. Just a lot of Connie Marrero, Camilo Pasquale. Just good ball players. You're the first one of my analysts that has told me they've spring trained in Cuba, by the way. Is that right? Yeah. Kind of unusual. I think it's unbelievable. Of course. Luis Gonzalez has descendants from Cuba. If you go back in his family, he is a descendant of the Cuban nationality. And by the way, he did a great job last night. I thought so too. Oh, yeah. He had a really good show. He gave a lot of good tidbits. He talked about Pudge Rodriguez. I remember that distinctly because we used to talk about that. He said a lot of catchers will, will call for a fastball in a running situation and uh, apparently uh, Pudge had that reputation among many reputations because he was quite a catcher and still is. Steps out of the box tired of waiting. Well, Leamon doesn't shake his catcher off. You never see his head move but he stares him down. Till the right signal goes up. Kelly takes off, swung right through, throw down, got him. Well, collectively, they really throw at opposing base runners. They're at well over 40%, the team of Ramos and Rodriguez. You gotta like this Ramos. I saw him last night and I thought, man, that he doesn't drop many balls. The pitcher never looks wild, and his arm is very strong. 
Last night he put it right on the button here a little bit high but in time. And that by the way was a strike him out throw him out. As Stephen Drew digs in. Drew. Earlier in this ball game tripled. And since 2008 no shortstop has more extra base hits than Stephen Drew. And he's got a pretty comfortable lead. This one has popped up. It's a souvenir. He has got 206 extra base hits since 08. Seven more than Handy Ramirez and 20 more than Tulo. Troy Tulowitzki. That's what I mean by this guy gets taken for granted in a lot of areas, I think. And he's not in there just for his bat. He's in there for both the bat and the glove. Leave on. Right back to the bump, hopping around. By the way, 75 pitches, which for Levo, you don't even need to count pitches. It doesn't matter. Southwest Airlines new rapid rewards, unlimited reward seats, no blackout dates, fries. Like us on Facebook during today's game. Receive a coupon for huge savings, fries, fresh food, famous low prices. CenturyLink. Quest is becoming CenturyLink. Your link begins here. Find out more at CenturyLink.com slash link. Joe Saunders is... Officially now having to walk the tightrope only because it's a one to nothing game. He has been fabulous. Levon Hernandez has been as well. But it's a typical Levon game. We've seen him enough. It, it, it should not surprise us, but it, every time he does it, it does surprise you. This has been a good year for Hernandez as well. A little bit of that fountain of youth effect for Levo. Came in with a sub four ERA. His career ERA is close to four and a half. Usually you see pitchers as that one is over the outside corner sitting in the corner alone. How can he tell when he's tired? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure at all. You know, they're usually off in their corner with their own towel and yeah, not him. Don't talk to me. Down there in deep focus. Look at him. Look at him. He's just chatting up his teammates. We got Cora on. The left, he's got looks like another young teammate on the right. Come on, Levo, cheer down a little bit. <laughs> and Pudge, that's why he's there. That's Pudge's seat too. That's young Jordan Zimmerman, the man on the far left on your screen. That's strike three. Meantime, Levon Hernandez is looking out and seeing his mound mate match him step for step. As a matter of fact, he's one step ahead. Pitches like this. Rick and Keel. Hmm. 
Starting to feel that curveball strike oh, one. He's got a good sharp curveball going right now. I'll tell you Sanders has got to be the best game he's pitched. He threw five curveballs against Florida last time out of the 93 pitches. All five were strikes. That one is low. He really started to piece things and feel even stronger as far as pushing things back together on that last road trip. Game two of a doubleheader. In Denver, Colorado. Broke his bat. Kelly squares it up. And two outs in the inning. They don't forget the 2011 Major League Baseball All Star game is coming right here this July. Don't forget about one of the most fun All Star events, the State Farm Home Run Derby. The Home Run Derby is Monday, July 11th at Chase Field. Single game tickets for that Home Run Derby, and that's special, unique to be able to have that opportunity, are on sale now. Get your home run derby tickets online at allstargame.com. And I will see all of you there. That's going to be a lot of fun. 1 0 the count to Brian Bixler. Back to the screen it goes. I mean, we've seen in this ballpark, Mark Reynolds. And Justin Upton hit it up into the food area in Friday. Some of those outdoor tables out there. Will we see someone get higher than that? In that home run derby? The 1 1. Outside, 2 and 1 the count. I think that's almost a given. Heck, Justin Upton got in there in the first row of those outdoor tables. Yeah, but they're getting all those room service fastballs in at home run derby. Mm -hmm. That one is fouled off. I'm going to say somebody's going to take a shot at that neon sign up at the top of the restaurant. Get the words front row. Maybe take a bowl bow. The 2 2. Inside corner strike three. We're busy talking about home runs, and Joe Saunders reminds all of us tonight it clearly is about pitching. Presented by CenturyLink. Todd Walsh, Joe Borowski will be here for that. Joe, you said on the pregame show, LeVon Hernandez needed a little something extra tonight. You've got the pitcher's duel. Did he get what he needed? Todd, we normally tease the pitchers during the seventh inning. Let's do the hitters today. Okay. Specifically one, Stephen Drew. I'm going to break down his at-bats against Levo and how his disciplined approach had the Diamondbacks on top. All right. I'm looking forward to that. I bet you are as well. Darren and Joe will send it back to you. Good stuff. Looking forward to talking baseball with you guys. Giving the hitters some love. I like it, Joe Borowski. He didn't give the hitters much love when he wore a uniform. Not at all, but an interesting subject. By the way, Lucille Shrek, happy 95th birthday today. And we're glad to have you. Happy birthday to you. 95 and still lovely and beautiful here at the ballpark. 
And their shirt reminding us that uh, GG rocks. The whole family is gathered together in red for her 95th birthday party out in the bleachers. Love it, love it. 95 gives us all hope. Yeah, they got some signs and everything. Yes, it does. Look, cat and mouse game. Chris Young stepped out. Levon back down. Young is 0 for 2 with the strikeout against him. Bounces that one into the hole in left field. So Young manages to get that base hit. He had been frustrated by his old teammate as well. So now Nady. Nady came up with a couple of runners on and one out in the fourth inning and drove a ball to right that looked like it might add a couple of insurance runs. Worth drifted back and made it look easy as he went up against that yellow line at the top of the wall. And he saved a couple of runs. Slow curveball strike one. The fact that he's as tall as he is didn't hurt him. No, it didn't mean, hurt him at all. He got up there. He's played it like it's his right field since he has arrived a couple of days back. Fastball sails out of there. Grew up in Salinas, California, didn't 80? Xavier is not an unusual name in his household anyway growing up because he is the sixth in his family tree. Father played college athletics. Oh boy. One and two. That's a pitch as a kid. You remember you called it a drop? Mm-hmm. Now they got all kind. Of, look at that. Down she goes. He's just hypnotized when he throws that thing. And how he doesn't tip it off, I'm not quite sure, but he doesn't. No. And it's got to get you thinking as a hitter. Those hitters already thinking a bunch. Well, you know, you're always scouting somebody. You heard Gonzo last night talk about that the catchers like to throw a call for fastballs when the guy's running. And usually catchers will call for pitches that they couldn't hit in the jam. And when you're in a one run ball game, uh, every inning's a jam. Nady steps out. Hernandez's last two pitches have been the hardest and the slowest of the game. 86 two pitches ago 59 the last pitch. And he goes inside back up there. 59 59 on that curveball. It's got to be embarrassing when the catcher throws back to you harder than you threw to him. <laughs> I mean you can't even get a ticket. Those cameras out on the freeway they'll just let you go on by if you throw one 59. You keep you out of the HOV lane that's for sure. Two and two, the count. Uh, leave on. Don't tell Nady it's an easy pitch to hit. No. Because it's not. Well, he's trying to get that inside corner. That's twice, and he hasn't gotten the call. It looks close. Well, they ran last time. It was 3 2, strike them out and throw them out. And they got a pretty good runner on the first base. And Chris Young, got to believe he's going. We watch Young here. He goes slow, curveball, and just hanging in there is Nady fouling it off. 
I'll say one thing for the young catcher. He called for the slow curveball, didn't call for the fastball, so he get a good ball to handle. Boy, I love that chest protect. It's right out of Star Wars, isn't it? It is. They've evolved. At the gray because his uniform is gray. Wilson Ramos. Let's see if he'll call for that slow bender again. He's putting down fingers. The guy's calling the pitches is Levon. Runner goes. Hot shot down the line. He picked on a changeup. It rolls into that corner. Young is hustling on around. He is in, standing up an insurance run as Nady with an RBI. He put quite an at bat on Levon Hernandez. Arizona two, Washington nothing. And what's going to get lost in that run is the fact that Young is running on both three two pitches. He stayed right on it. Look at the follow through. I mean, I guess you get a hitter out front, and Levon Hernandez is so unique in the way he goes about his business. But sailing that changeup in to a right handed hitter seemed a little dangerous to me, righty on righty. And he was on it enough. I guess you have to keep your weight back if you're Nady. Harder to time that pitch than anything. That, that's why he's probably fearless in throwing it. That's right. Para hitting 250 with runners in scoring position takes low. Arizona leads it now two to nothing. They have split the first two games of this series with Washington. He just won't bite 2 and 0 the count. A couple of times Para has gotten to this point. Burnett's the left hander and Kimball is the right hander, Cole Kimball. Para has gotten to this point. Hitters count only to have Levon stay stubborn and get him. Like that. Baseball is such a funny game that a pitcher on a hitter's count of 2 and 0 can throw 84 miles an hour down the middle and get you. But that's what happened. Well, I don't know who said it. It was either late to Harmon, Tulabru, or Baylor. In a batter's box, you got to be not tense, but intense. And sometimes if you get too intense, you're going to be tense. And that's what happens. Joe's trying to figure out if he gets to come back out. Burroughs has a bat. He's in the on deck circle. You got somebody warming up in that bullpen, so I don't think it's a decoy, depending on what Blanco does. It is David Hernandez. Well, Joe Saunders had the look of a guy who doesn't want to be done pitching. If I saw that shot right anyway. Swing and a miss. One and one the count. 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position tonight are the Diamondbacks. And Burroughs has been quite a pinch hitter. And he's done a nice job. And a real nice job. Big picture Arizona has not had as many fall in at all with runners in scoring position in this series. But they still have a chance to take two of the first three games. Outside. They have just one hit with a runner in scoring position in this series. In 23 at bats. It doesn't sound right.
And that one hit a 3 0 3 run triple by Stephen Drew. It's interesting. Stop to think about that. Two and one the count. Willie Bloomquist is ready to be a part of things. That's a strike. Two and two the count. I think the plate umpire Carpazza was going to call it a ball and it just kept creeping up there and caught the corner. I mean, that's not Uncle Swifty he's throwing. But he's around that plate. He's going to get strikes called like that. That pitch is low. With Burroughs waiting on deck, Saunders probably done. We remind you that during this 17 and 4 run, Arizona's starting pitchers have an ERA of 2.9 collectively. Mm. He still want he did boy that was a great shot great job guys. He just asked so you sure I'm done. Nagy said I think you are and he wasn't. Uh, too pleased. He's done for sure now. So the night is done for Joe Saunders seven shutout innings. The best start of the year bar none. He's shown great affection for that bat I'll say that. He wanted to keep pitching. He saw 93 pitches. Majority of his career as his mates come down to congratulate him. As Burroughs gets the assignment now. I tell you, Burroughs hit the first pitch for a base hit pinch inning and then battled a tough pitcher and got his second one. He knows what to do with that bat. A lot of congratulations from his mates as Burroughs back to the screen. As soon as Sean was announced, there was looked like a line at a wedding. Saunders should have got his money bag out from all his teammates. <laughs> I mean, they just lined up, and I love that. I love good teammates, and these guys. It's cool again to be a team player as a Diamondback. I'll just leave it at that. Owen won the count. You can interpret the rest. One and one the count as that one misses away. Well, Burroughs has become, and Joe mentioned it, almost exclusively a pinch hitter. He's four of his last nine times out there, though. Took him a while to get his feet under him, but there's nothing wrong with four of his last nine as a pinch hitter. And hit hard. Every, every base hit was a, a hard hit ball. One and one the count. Another huge add on you just saw there a moment ago. Bouncing ball put it in play should be two and it is Lebo with a pump of the fist actually jogs there for a minute. That means he's really excited. But Joe Saunders is done fabulous tonight two to nothing.
was on his A game tonight, wasn't he? He was. He was. He can be proud of what he did. Not only pitching, his fielding was just exceptional. And that was the uh, wedding receiving line, as I like to call it. And I mean that in a good way. They were lined up to congratulate him. David Hernandez takes the rock and now he rolls the right hander Sacramento born and raised initially a Baltimore Oriole and a huge part of this bullpen. It was good to see them all shake hands and I'll tell you why I've been on ball clubs that we had big star making big money and guys when he strike out would say things like oh man if you're going to get paid that kind of money and strike out I can do that. That's not a team. I'll venture a guess a fly on the wall in the past few seasons gone by might have heard the very same thing here in this ballpark. Oh. Go to the bank with that one. I'm on your side. Oh and one the count. Veteran Alex Cora. A nice piece for these Washington Nationals has been throughout his career. As that one sails outside boy and we talk about that three headed monster that has become the successful Diamondbacks bullpen with a large supporting cast that I don't want to overlook. But this guy is one of the main men J.J. Putz will pitch behind him if it goes according to pan plan and left hander Joe Patterson as well. Oh yeah you got to don't forget him. Out front fastball. Kelly Johnson puts it away Cora is erased. You and I talked about this on the ride in that this especially on a national level these three players on our television screen have helped to turn this team around. Yes they have. I mean it's just take any one of them any one of the three and you can make a story out of it. Rule five pick on the left trade in the middle Mark Reynolds in that deal to Baltimore and free agent signee because he could come close here other teams offered him jobs several other teams. But he wouldn't be the closer. And did you think he was going to be the closer the way he had the spring training he had? Yeah, there were concerns about his health and the way he pitched on backfields and what he throw two total innings in regular games. Right. Boy, you'd never know it the way he's going. One and one the count. Now, Hernandez was a pitcher that up until Early last year was a starter throughout his career. Was just an average starter. He's become a very good reliever since they made the change. Breaking ball on the corner. You know, if they need a starter, they're going to remember that, but it's going to cost you because he's doing so well in the bullpen so far. So yeah. you're betwixt and between. I think he moves down that line because of what you're talking about. I think he's about choice number 10. You need him in that eighth inning. Jerry Hairston awaits the one two shoots a fastball down the line and it's foul. Well, what Hernandez has done which has been fun to watch is gain confidence in this area. Yes he was a reliever in Baltimore but not in these situations. He was just part of the pen. This is different. I mean, for me, an eighth inning man, an everyday eighth inning man, there's not much difference in this and the closer. Breaking ball, he thought about going, and it's, he did not. It seems, Darren, like you, you almost need four pitchers. You know, you need a starter, you need a long middle guy, you need a holder, you need a closer. And, and make the move and if you fill those spots and there's the pitching coach it, it, that's his little kindergarten right there. He's got a baby him. Fastball that's strike three. That right arm electric tonight of David Hernandez. You know you talk about Kevin Towers and his ability to have foresight and see a player that fits in somewhere. 
Kevin Towers went and traded a slugging third baseman. A couple of pieces came back. Mikolayo, who's in the minor leagues, a reliever. And then David Hernandez. He saw enough in a guy who in two seasons in Baltimore had an ERA of nearly five. That was it. Nearly five to put him in this bullpen. A little bit of foresight as Knicks takes a curveball for a strike. Because he saw the guy. He didn't let statistics get him. You know, it's, it's, it's the line I read. Statistics are like a lamppost to a drunk. Something to lean on. It's perfectly said. He looked into his eyes. He watched That's him right. pitch. He saw him pitch. And the statistician looked over at me and he's now and he said, shut up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no balls and two strikes to count. And there's the man who did it. He put his neck on the line, but everybody's going to forget that because they're going to look at the standings. Kevin's been, and it ties in interestingly, but first this 0 2 pitch. Base hit right field, an 0 2 that he was ready for. He watched enough Knicks from the bench, the pinch hitter, Lance Knicks, to learn that he had a good breaking ball. And he picked on it. Jason Quickly to finish the thought on Towers. Over a couple of occasions over the last few weeks, he has gotten on a plane, flown to places around the country to see players play college or high school baseball just to confirm the way he feels about that player. And he may see only five innings, get in a cab, head back to the next flight, just to confirm the way he feels for the upcoming draft. Well, you can put a radar gun on a pitcher, but your eyes are going to tell you whether he can pitch or not. Your eyes. Pitches outside, 1 and 0, the count. Doesn't mean you're going to hit every time. He yeah. has some drafts in San Diego that they've talked about didn't go the way of the Padres. Well, I'll always remember those. They won't remember the good ones. 1 and 0, the count. That one is outside. But isn't it interesting as he battles through this one. But there's a guy by the name of David Hernandez here with an ERA of 1 7. And there's a pitcher in San Diego who Kevin Towers went and grabbed in the very same manner by the name of Mike Adams. Who over the last three years has an ERA of 1 7. And on a big scale most baseball players people had never heard of either one of them on a big scale. But. The only scale that counts is the one t Kevin Towers has. 2 and 0 the count. Well, he's got to figure this out. Pitching carefully to Worth. Tremendous power. He's got the same thing on deck though. Big Mike Morse waits. Yeah, he lost him. Mm -hmm. Now his back is not against the wall, but it's edging a little closer. Charles Nagy wants to talk about it. Mike Morris, 11 game hitting streak, longest for Washington this year, and he has homered in five of his last 11 games. You know, you often wonder, what are they talking about? They're not talking strategy. And Nagy's trying to just break the mood a little bit and just, hey, just remember what, how you got him out and what you've been doing before tonight and so forth and so on and go out and do it. Jim Riggleman just got Morris's attention as Kirk Gibson looks on as well. In the other dugout, Riggleman just got Morse's attention and said, hey, he just missed with four straight. Be ready for him to try to find the plate right away. With the fastball. And instead, it's a breaking ball. Breaking ball. Got behind. 1-0 and oh, the count. David lifts and goes and pours it in there. One and one. 96 miles an hour. That's the one I thought he was going to throw. A 
A single and a walk with two outs. Breaking ball is high, overthrew it. Now, if you're the hitter, he threw two curveballs that he couldn't throw for strikes, not even close, but he threw the fastball for a strike. What would you be looking for? Something to think of when you come to a game or when you're watching at home. Let's watch together. Perfect fastball. Fastball. You could see he gripped it. It was a forcing. How to get that modern term. I, I, I'm proud of you, Joe. How about this crowd? They're into it. Go ahead, run in the batter's box. The 2 2. Fastball got him. And remember that the pitching coach Nagy went out to talk to him and you know they weren't talking strategy and I'd be willing to bet I'd bet the house on it that he said something like hey you're in the jam throw the pitch that got you here what got you here was your fastball not a curveball not a changeup rear back and fire it and boy he did. The right hander Kimball takes the baseball Cole Kimball 10th time this year the numbers have been good though first batters as you can see that's really been his only trouble he's had to clean things up they've reached at a 44 percent clip otherwise nobody's gotten any hits. Ryan Roberts. There is as we take a look at the shortstop Alex Cora Cora batting ninth the pitcher spot is second in the order now for Kimball. But there's a certain attitude in that bullpen now. No question about it. We showed you the three faces, the key elements of that bullpen. The man warming down there is uh, the leader, the unofficial captain, J.J. Puts. But there's a certain attitude now that hasn't been there in the last couple of years. Remember Kurt uh, Gibson talking about him, uh, how he really babysat the kid, uh, Patterson. Brought him through. Breaking ball into the dirt. And there have been someone who grew up in a locker room, and certainly when you played, there have been some behind the scenes, some fun things that we've heard about secondhand that goes on. Initiation. Oh, sure. Things that go along with it that we hadn't heard about as well. Things that superstitions. 
that tie into winning and winning streaks. Since they're just second hand, I'd rather not pass them on, but they they're pretty fun. Two and two the cow. Wow, there's another big fastball. We love our word of the game because you may get to go to FanFest. The FanFest word of the game is savvy. Do you have the savvy to log on to FoxSportsArizona.com now for your chance to win two tickets to the FanFest at the Phoenix Convention Center next month. Now, we're giving away three pairs of tickets every night during every telecast, so hop on there. There are plenty to be grabbed, as you can see. Savvy is the word. Here's Kelly Johnson. Owen won the count. Kelly's walked twice tonight. Looking for his first hit of the series. That one is on the ground out to Cora. Boy nearly beat it out. That was close. That's a perfect example right there of a guy not running to the bag, but running through the bag. Watch this. He just goes. Just. Oh, that was close. I don't know. Justin Upton now. Fans love seeing that. Don't you folks at home? That kind of effort. Been nice to see how Kelly's turned things around this season. Fastball 0 and 1, Justin Upton. Singled back in the fourth inning, otherwise, he's fly to right and struck out. He's got 12 hits and 22 at bats in this homestand. Hmm. Fouls that one off. A quick reminder take the D backs wherever you go this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today. You can see every D backs game on demand on your computer. Visit dbacks.com. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. Oh, and two the count. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow if you make it down to the ballpark. That will be on television with you, but come on down as this homestand wraps up tomorrow. Ian Kennedy is on the mound. Fastball is high. Ian Kennedy against Jason Marquis, who has beaten Tim Lincecum this year, had some solid starts. He's got six wins, does Marquis, so does Kennedy. Two and two, the count. It's all he's throwing is fastballs. He hadn't thrown a breaking ball yet. Two to nothing, the score. Three big outs to get for the Diamondbacks as Upton hits a high fly ball into right center. Worth creeps on in and he puts it away. Veteran right hander JJ puts will receive the assignment in just a moment to lock this ball game down.
Two to nothing the score. Wonderful tape room. Greg, Mike, and Ernie all weekend, and we love our home show. And we are glad to bring our home show into the ninth inning with all of you. As JJ puts 16 of 17, the lone blown save still was a win for the team. And a 1880 ERA. Big Michigan born right hander. Strike one. What do you like about him, Joe? He throws strikes now. He challenges him. The old Satchel Page theory throw peas at the knees and high riders. That's exactly what he does. Satch was way ahead of his time. That one is into the dirt. A lot of times those peas at the knees that puts will throw will be that split fingered fastball down at the knees. When he's got his. Well, I guess regular uh, split finger it really dips. So I guess that would be split peas at the knees. <laughs> one and one to count. Ooh, don't give up the day job. Fastball out. Ooh. Hello. Crowd umpiring. If we can get him out of the seats, we'd have another strike. So again, just the other day against Florida, he, he suffered a blown save, a home run by John Buck. His team eventually won the game, though, 6 5. Swing and a miss, 2 and 2. That was for J.J. Putz after throwing the entire month of May without giving up a single earned run. Wow. Staying with the Swifty. The big fella on to two. It's fouled off. By the slugger Danny Espinosa. The 2 2 to Danny. Split fingered fastball. That's strike three. That's the one you're talking about, Joe. That's it. That thing really moved. It's almost like he was gripping it as he was going into the glove with the ball. Oh, man, he missed that by a foot and a half. Yeah, he will grip it every single time and then adjust accordingly. Which is a good idea. Team Winnie. Yeah, there he He's goes. got it already. He's got there it is. That's a slider for a strike. Right at the belt. Doesn't throw that pitch as much. Kind of a show me pitch. Show me, yeah. It's a commercial pitch. I'll be right back after I throw you this one. <laughs> Uh oh. Ground ball out to 30. Left that splitter up, and Roberts was there for him. That was the split fingered fastball. It didn't do anything, but he's got a third baseman behind him. One out to get. Look at the crowd. The crowd is into it, Darren. Rick Keel. Pitch is high, off speed, couldn't finish it. 1 0 the count. Pitch is low, a fastball, 2-0 to Rick. He's going to kind of take inventory now. 
Chris Young would say he's amped up. And I guess Putz would say something like, "Well, the adrenaline is flowing." At any rate, he wants to shut it down right here. Pass ball. It's low. Three and zero. Oh the count. Bernadina has a bet. He's waiting in the on deck circle. On three zero, -oh, right there. The crowd will tell you what's happening. The three one driven to center field young is tracking still going he won't get there it's up against the wall Hank you scalded that baseball still the tying run is the man in the batter's box with a two to nothing lead how big was that extra run back in the seventh Hank you with his first hit of the ball game a double that's five doubles this year. He went down and got it. He stayed right with it. Washington is hitless in five tries with runners in scoring position. Here's Bernadina hitting 242. One long ball, eight RBIs, one hit in this series. It was a triple. Roberts is in at third on the grass. Splitter strike outside corner. Roberts just because he can bunt has to stay in. Breaking ball inside corner 0 and 2. He really put that in a tough, tough spot for the hitter. Just hanging around. Trying to lock down their fifth team shutout of the season, these Diamondbacks. They threw three all of last year. And boy, that'll make the night special. Well, Henry's really selling him on a pitch there. The 0 2. And he hangs around. KJ wasn't sure if he wanted to throw that fastball, and Henry probably doesn't spend that chip very often. But he did. He went ahead. Yeah, I want that fastball. Well, sometimes you've got to make it up with the pitcher. If I give it back to you again, it's because I really believe in it. You got to throw your best pitch in this spot. Time run is at the plate. Two strikes. Shook him off again. He's going to go out there. That's the only thing you can do. Go out there and talk about it. Well, what do you want to do? Here's what I want to do. Why do you want to do that? Well, I don't, blah, 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 whatever. But they're going to talk it out between them and be sure that they both know what's coming. Our post game show with Todd and Joe coming up immediately after this game. A lot to talk about again. The 0 2 pitch. 
Chases. No good there. Thought about it, but he didn't. Here's his pitch of decision right here. One and two the count. J.J. Deals popped up. Steven back. Para in. Drew calls for it. Gerardo says, I've got it. And the Diamondbacks are 18 and four in their last 22 ball games. And oh boys, by the way, welcome back to first place. from it now it's triple digits outside and the Diamondbacks are in first place and you have to go back to July of 09 the last time these Diamondbacks had back-to-back -back shutouts as a team that's a long time ago we got a lot to talk about Joe and I will be back on the post game in a bit we've got to get it out to the set another fine game 18 wins in their last 22 contests. Our post game show. They fired up the lights. You guys ready out there? We'll get it to them immediately after this commercial break.